Welcome to God Encounters. We're so glad that you've joined us today. Today my guest is Carissa Gobble, and Carissa is a brand new author of a book called I'm From dot 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 earth question mark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, this is what it looks like, and right now it's a bestseller. Where's it a bestseller? Uh, in the free Kindle store for cultural anthropology category and also Christian uh, ministry and evangelism, the free Kindle store. Wow, yeah. that's cool. It's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anywhere else? Nope, just Amazon. Right now? Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, Carissa lives here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest with her husband and three adorable children. Mm -hmm. They're all beautiful. <laughs> so, um, from motherhood to coordinating different events. Yes. You are one busy lady. Yes. For sure. <laughs> you have quite the lifestyle. And I got to know you through our friend Marlise mm -hmm. when I went to a toxin free workshop that she had hosted. Yeah. You are so knowledgeable of what is good for you and what is not. And I thoroughly appreciate <laughs> that about you. Because okay. you do the legwork for so many of us <laughs> out there. Really. And you need a magnifying glass today to read all the things yes. on the back of those products. <laughs> yeah. So um, I appreciate your site, the mm -hmm. um, home front community that mm -hmm. you built that gives us knowledge of what's out there and what's good for us and what's not. Yeah. I'm really, I'm simple. I like the pictures. I like when you, if you like this, don't use it anymore. Use this. This is the better. <laughs> That's good. It's, it's simple and it's good. Yeah. It's very effective. So. You live a life of transparency, no matter how uncomfortable you are about it. And I really admire that about you because not everybody can do that. Mm. A lot of people put on the face and they just mm -hmm. go through life and they never get healing. Yeah. And things just kind of get worse. Yeah. So I really appreciate your boldness and courageousness, I should say, to step yeah. forward for your healing mm -hmm. and, and what you've been through. So. Thanks. Given that, with the quite an interesting background that you've had and challenges you've had to face, mm -hmm. can you share with us some about your background? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was a missionary kid. So I grew up in four countries, um, and I think it was like six states. I don't remember anymore. But wow. <laughs> uh, before the age of 12. So wow. um, I... Uh, started born in Houston. Parents worked for NASA. We uh, went to Egypt, Cairo, Egypt. We were there for about, I don't really remember. Everyone asked me about Egypt, and I don't remember it. Because you were so young. <laughs> so young. Bummer, because uh, what know. a place to be. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So we started there. We are there for about two, three years. Um, and then a bunch of my uh, dad's co-workers with the business that he worked there with uh, were thrown in prison um, under kind of a kind of a misunderstanding um, and they uh, my dad went out got a bunch of diapers for us all and food in case he was next and um, but they never came from they did tap our phones so my mom wasn't able to call anybody uh, if you did have to make a call you could it, this is the 90s, right? So uh, phone taps back then mm -hmm. um, in Cairo, Egypt, apparently. Wow. Uh, you pick up the phone, you hear them talking on the other end. So you'd have to be like, I would like to make a phone call. Could you be quiet, please? And then, oh, you know, all the, the uh, intelligence or police, whatever, would go silent. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, wow. And then they were followed for a, a lot of the time, too, while they were there during that couple-month period while the coworkers were in prison. So my dad would bring them food and things like that question on that mm -hmm. so is it because they were American you were Americans or Christians or mm -hmm. what um, when I looked at the news articles it looked like they were trying they uh, were accusing them of radicalizing um, mm. uh, conversions or something it was it was very interesting how they worded it okay <laughs> um, and they uh, but I think they were under the assumption that these American employees were um, proselytizing or uh, evangelizing okay. um, in a very radical way. It wasn't okay. illegal to share your faith with people, okay. um, but they thought they were doing a very extreme version of it. Um, and so a couple months passed, uh, they ended up sending all the coworkers 
uh, of my dad's back home, just putting them on a plane mm. and letting their families know. Um, and so uh, our family was still under this constant radar. So it was kind of a really terrible lifestyle. <laughs> we came back. Uh, we regrouped. We had a uh, started a business in Bahrain. Um, Manama Bahrain is a small island off the coast of Saudi Arabia. Mm. Um, and so I lived there for a few years, about three years before we came back and my parents worked in Arizona for a year. And then I went to Indonesia for eight years. So I was in Indonesia the longest and that's the one I remember the most. So what were your ages then in, that you lived there? In Indonesia, mm -hmm. um, we moved there in 2001. So I would think it was about 10 or 11, yeah. I was 10 okay. when I moved there. And then I came back for college. When you were 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite the interesting, you know, you, you moved around a little bit. Yes. A mm -hmm. lot of military kids have had to move around a lot mm -hmm. too, so, but you weren't military. Yeah. So what else can, do you want to share about that? Because I know that spurred on this book, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you, it's interesting you mentioned military kids. So, uh, for me, being a missionary kid, um, I have friends that are military kids. There's kids of diplomats, um, mm. kids of immigrants, refugees. All of us tend to have this common experience where our parents had a certain culture uh, that they raised us in the home, and then there's the culture that we were living in that was surrounding us. Um, and they're usually very contrary or contrasting. Mm. And sometimes you have multiple, like in my case, there were multiple cultures, uh, changes mm. in, a, in that most impactful period of um, a person's life in the early childhood, middle childhood years, yeah. um, where you're starting to learn, where's my place in the world? Or how do I behave? Or what are gender roles? Um, you know, and, or how do we treat the elderly in our society? Those mm -hmm. types of things that mm -hmm. a lot of us pick up kind of like osmosis almost, you <laughs> right, know. Right, right. Um, but if yours is always changing, yes. <laughs> wow, that would be rough. So it, it becomes, uh, there's a term we call ourselves now versus just military kids or missionary kids. The newest term is third culture kid. You've kind of created your own third culture mm -hmm. in trying to adapt and navigate these dramatically different things, messages you're receiving as mm, a child. Mm. Um, and it's different than if you go overseas as an adult. Um, you you already have a worldview, you have a perspective, you expect it to be different mm -hmm. than where you've been. It may still be shocking. <laughs> you still may come home with very interesting stories <laughs> of things you encounter, but um, it's also, uh, you have a framework as an adult that you don't as a child. So it's a very different, um, type of a life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we come away from that experience thinking differently than a, a lot of people do. Um, and also we interact with the world around us and we make decisions in a very different sort of way. But we all kind of, there's a lot of similarities among us because of those experiences. Um, and so frequently we get misunderstood. And that is usually because we just don't fit into someone's box. Like, I look very American, I have an American accent, um, but sometimes I will say things or do things and I'll freak people out. Like, I, oh, like <laughs> one time I put a knife in a toaster oven um, and my mother-in-law almost had a heart attack. <laughs> she's like, no! I'm like, she's like, you're not supposed to, this is a very dangerous thing to do. I didn't know, I didn't grow up with toaster ovens like, uh, or like yeah. toasters. I. Uh, <laughs> And I, yeah, I've had, there's a lot of stories of American appliances I didn't grow up with. So right. I, I do some stupid things sometimes <laughs> because I didn't, wasn't familiar with it. Um, mm -hmm. And then other times I'll have people say, wow, you're so mature beyond your years, you know, so. See, that's the side I You see. <laughs> I, I think you're highly intelligent, mm -hmm. um, truly, because I've listened to you talk and stuff. You have a really good brain. You're highly intelligent. <laughs> and um, can leave me like light years away sometimes, I think. But, so I haven't seen the other side. But. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's very much a um, situational basis. Um, but I, I have, my brothers have gotten the same thing. It's just because we've been exposed to so much of the world in such a short period of mm. time, like systemic poverty, terrorism. Uh, we had a, um, the Bali bombing, I think it was in 2002, uh, happened in Denpasar when we lived there in the island of Bali, it shook our house. Mm. Um, and so, like, and then I watched, uh, so like, in the in in my book here, I compare it to like we're here in the states. You wait for Black Friday for your like big mm -hmm. deals. Like mm -hmm. over there, when there's a big terrorist attack, like 
all the tourists, it destroys the economy. Mm. It like cripples the economy. Mm. And then the price, everything goes down. So it's like instead wow. of our, instead of Black Friday, we have terrorism. Um, and it's a terrible thing to say, but it's just the reality. And so wow. that's kind of the world that um, I grew up with. Um, and a lot of other third culture kids, we've been exposed to what real poverty looks like, you know, mm -hmm. where you're um, picking through, gar you live in a garbage dump and there's no way for even your kids to advance because you can't afford uniforms for them to go to school. Yeah. So these kinds of things where we've seen them in person, when we come back here to the States or into like Europe or first world countries, as we like to call them, mm -hmm. um, there are some issues that, you know, um, people talk about here, my peers talk about, I'm like, well, I don't really have anything productive to say about this because I don't see it from your perspective. I've seen a very contrary perspective um, and I've been faced with a lot of these things um, in real life. So um, those types of situations can make it hard for third culture kids to interact with their peers mm -hmm. um, because we can't relate to them in the mm -hmm. same way. Mm -hmm. We don't see the world through the same lens. And so this book was really, um, my heart behind it was to help friends and family of third culture kids understand them better mm -hmm. uh, like better questions to ask than wow what was that like <laughs> because how can you sum up your whole life in, right. in one like right. one question right. like that it's right. really hard sure. <laughs> right like what was it like if you lived here in in one state your whole life tell me about that that sounds very <laughs> fascinating to me I don't know what that's right. like <laughs> we take things for granted sometimes mm -hmm. yeah definitely I wanted to say would you s say that you're more sensitive um, to others because you've been in so many different cultures mm -hmm. and different people groups would you say you're a little more sensitive sometimes to others than mm -hmm. some people might be yeah I would say um, most third culture kids um, they're really good at communicating um, and we can, it kind of depends on the personality because some third culture kids, they just want to blend in no matter what. They're so tired of sticking out and mm -hmm. being odd mm -hmm. that they just want to like pretend that they're just like you. Um, and I have a brother that was kind of like that. <laughs> um, but for me, I, I love the fact that because I've been, I've seen so many different worldviews that I, when I have a conversation with someone, I know off the bat that they're not going to think about things the same way that I am. They mm -hmm. have very different experiences than I have. Um, and so I can understand, I seek to understand things a lot more than, um, and I'm okay if we don't agree. Mm -hmm. So I feel like um, being, growing up amongst the worlds <laughs> of thought and feeling and culture uh, definitely sets us up to be able to kind of put yourself in the other person's shoes very easily. Yeah. Um, so it makes communication yeah. a lot easier. And you'd have to be adaptable too, mm -hmm. constantly, to yes. changing things. So yeah, those are huge traits to have, uh, definitely. Um, what inspired your book, mm -hmm. I'm From Earth? So the inspiration for I'm From Earth was looking at um, just this people group that's kind of this kind of hidden in plain sight in some ways where um, we look like you, we talk like you, but we're really not like you. Sometimes um, one TCK I quoted in here mentioned he kind of wishes he his skin reflected his heart, mm. you know, because he just looks like the typical white dude, <laughs> mm -hmm. and he's not. He his personality really uh, resonates a lot more with someone of color, mm -hmm. and so that can be hard to navigate. And uh, there's a lot of families too, especially um, I think missionary families, that come back off the field and they're they're like, what happened to my child? Mm -hmm. um, and there's quite a few of us. I did a survey and there's some graphs in the book mm -hmm. about it, but about almost a quarter of uh, the people I surveyed do not follow the family faith anymore for various wow. reasons. Wow, that's and so, sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's, and it causes contention in families. So this was a book that I, I wanted to explore why that mm. happened um, and just help people understand us better because we're very misunderstood and we don't fit in like a particular box. And it's a very hugely growing demographic of people as our world gets more and more connected mm -hmm. uh, with social media. Um, the world, the barriers of connection in our world are rapidly decreasing, as you can see with your show here, you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I just, preached, I just preached to Pakistan 
Tuesday from my oh, living room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Through Facebook. So, awesome. you know, how fun is that? I mm -hmm. didn't have to leave. I didn't have to buy the expensive ticket. Mm -hmm. And I was able to still do the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, so I see the benefits. But, yeah, there are cultural, um, I don't know if you'd say breakdowns. But, you know, it's hard sometimes. If they don't speak the same language, mm -hmm. it's very hard to have any kind of communication going on. But, yeah. 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 So. Mm -hmm. Well, do you have a God encounter that you could share that was memorable or life-changing for you? Um, I think uh, my uh, upbringing uh, as a missionary kid, my parents were really great at involving me in their work. So it was as I was thinking about that question, I don't, um, I don't know if I could pinpoint one in particular because I feel like there were so many mm -hmm. over the course of my life mm -hmm. where whether it was something that I felt personally um, under the presence of the Lord or if it was just watching, you know, uh, someone be able to hear again when mm -hmm. they were deaf or mm -hmm. their, you know, the blind being able to see, you know, mm -hmm. a tumor like starting to shrink under my hands, like those mm -hmm. kinds of things. That was just like my life. In so you some experienced ways. miracles like that when yeah. you prayed with people. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Yeah. So that was a really <laughs> cool part of getting to be on the field and grow up in that type of environment. Yeah. Um, and a lot of things that happen with third culture kids is some of their parents won't involve them in their in their mm. work overseas, and that mm. can create a lot of distance and disconnect. Uh, but for me, I was really lucky in that my parents involved me in a lot of what they did. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had lots of those God encounters where God encountered someone in front of me. It's very undeniable, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> very right. undeniable right. things. Um, but I would say like uh, more of a challenge for me and what's been a really cool God encounter most recently in my life is learning to see God um, and let him encounter me through like the body of Christ most recently um, because for me one issue that a lot of third culture kids st struggle with and for me too is connecting with people longer term because people come in and out of your life mm. all the time mm. they're changing constantly so being able to build a community and let them love you mm -hmm. and learn how to love them in return mm -hmm. um, and let them be like the hands and feet and words of Jesus to you in a mm -hmm. moment that's a lot can be a lot more messy you know mm -hmm. <laughs> because they're not it's not this like one-way communication with the Lord right. anymore right. Um, and so that has been a really big a uh, way in the past few months that I feel like God has been encountering me personally is just, wow, like this new revelation of what it's like to be loved by a father figure mm -hmm. um, that I didn't let myself feel before from someone that wasn't like my biological dad, you mm -hmm. know, um, because I had walls, walls up. Um, maybe it was partially from growing up in Muslim cultures and the barriers between men and women are, you know, very distinct and is right. culturally immersed in right. that. Even in the churches, we'd have men and women on separate sides of the room sometimes. Really? Just naturally, they would evolve into that. <laughs> We're like, who wants to sit there? All the women <laughs> would sit together. All the men would sit together in church. Wow. Um, so it's just a cultural thing. So that has been a really beautiful way. That's not necessarily like a supernatural thing, um, but to me it's supernatural because the supernatural was very normal to me growing up. And so then to to let people love you mm -hmm. has been a really impactful thing on my heart most recently and mm -hmm. how the Lord has encountered me that way. Isn't it amazing how we see, we tend to see more miracles overseas mm -hmm. than we do in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's because of de desperation or they don't have Mm -hmm. The same medical we ha I don't mm -hmm. know, you know. I get that question a lot. Yeah, um, I mean, and I experienced it in India, mm -hmm. so I know. That yeah, there's also one th thing that comes to my mind a lot that I see here versus that I see over there is the supernatural realm over there is everybody believes in it. Mm. It's part of the culture. Mm. Like even the Christians, the Catholics, the the, the Muslims, they all believe in the supernatural realm. Mm. It's very present, you know, in a lot of these, like particularly in Indonesia where I was, Islam is the latest coding of religion mm. on a, a lot of um, mysticism and um, just, uh, uh, just a lot of culturally ingrained there's so many people groups and they have a lot of, they have their witch doctors and all this and so even though it's not an Islam thing you'll find these little shops that will take curses off of your car if you're in a car accident it's just part of the culture it's part of just the kind of like for us is the um, all the uh, science is in some ways our religion 
of mm -hmm. the day. We, we rely on science to define so many things. And so I kind of feel like it's almost the enemy's tactic in the U.S. Um, and in Western countries is to more of that mindset and mentality um, uh, and le logic um, right. tactic versus a fear tactic from the supernatural. So over there it's more of this like fear of the supernatural and so it's mm. very easy for miracles and signs and wonders to just evolve. There's just this, there's mm. this already faith for things like that. Wow. Where here it's very much a we have to get past that like well how does this make sense logically mm -hmm. or scientifically yeah, you right. know there's a because it's part of our culture but yeah we'll watch superheroes and you know, <laughs> I know and, and fantasize about it but you mm -hmm. know i mean the supernatural is real so mm -hmm. it's kind of comical how that works so yeah um well, we have a little bit more time mm -hmm. something else that you could share maybe um from being in another country anything that do you have a question <laughs> <laughs> so the story you'd like to hear <laughs> Well, I wasn't sure if you wanted to share about the one where you've recently gotten healing about. Mm. Yeah, um, so I, um, overseas, um, we, there's, in, especially specifically in Indonesia, there is a strong um, cultural uh, priority for honor. So, and shame is like the ultimate enemy. So mm. over there, it supersedes truth, mm. right? Mm. Um, and so for me, um, I, uh, when my, in my family, when we were there in Indonesia, we encountered a, um, we were working alongside a ministry and they, uh, there was a particular, uh, head of that ministry that turned out to be a serial sexual predator. And, um, we were kind of clueless about that. So I, um, it kind of devastated our world dramatically. Um, and so I, um, had to process a lot of that. And that was a lot of that kind of what I was referring to recently about that whole, um, learning to trust and let other people love you. Mm -hmm. And we, um, it's hard though in that context because we reached out to this person and really wanted to help them. Mm -hmm. But for them in that culture to say that they needed help, because um, this was a, a high ranking Christian pastor, very well revered, um, huge ministry, saw lots of miracles, so many salvations, incredible, incredible uh, man of God in, in these people's eyes. It was so shocking. So, um, we, uh, it was really hard to um, watch him choose his family, honestly. He was choosing his family because if he had to come out and say, you know, this is, this is all true and um, I need help, um, he would lose his income, his source of income, mm -hmm. and it would, sh it would destroy the whole ministry. No one would trust it anymore. Honor is just, was just so mm. important. Oh, more powerful than truth mm. is so much more impactful than truth mm. um, than it is in our culture and mm. so it was very sad and and um, really tragic it was a very trauma traumatic experience because my whole um, community was part of this ministry that we were helping there so um, yeah it was um, a very interesting dynamic you get where uh, when you go overseas and you try to, you know, and you're bringing the Bible, but it's also very much a Western mindset, you know, of how this works. And um, it was, and my family was not prepared for how to deal with a, a sexual predator like that. So um, for me, you, very, um, it was it was really hard to process that, and because he was kind of like an uncle to me, um, and was like family, so it was really difficult to work through that in many layers. And I've been had a lot of healing through that, and learning to trust people, and and most recently really um, learning how to let like older men, like that kind of uncle figure, mm -hmm. father figure, mm -hmm. um, love me and mm -hmm. be able to receive the father's love in that in that way has been really huge and really um, impactful. So. Yeah, that would be hard. And then I can imagine, I can't imagine the pain that your parents had knowing, mm -hmm. you know, we trusted this man mm -hmm. and, and, you know, this is our daughter. And mm -hmm. so that would be tough too. Um, <clears throat> but I'm proud of you because a lot of people never come out of things like that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It just mm -hmm. kind of haunts them, if I could use that word, mm -hmm. for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And you think if stuffing something down and putting on that face like, hey, everything's good, I'm cool, it's, you know, life's, that's just something that happened to me. 
well, no, it really affected you, mm -hmm. and you need healing. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've been pretty transparent about it, and I just, I just really commend you for, for pressing through and allowing people to come into your life and mm -hmm. to put that wall down, you know, and say. But I believe that the Lord's given you discernment too. You mm -hmm. know, you can't go through something like this and not have some kind of discernment and wisdom mm -hmm. in the future with how you interact with people, mm -hmm. and you know. Yeah, I always say that that's come against you becomes power in your hand. Mm -hmm. So it only makes you better unless you choose to get bitter and you've chose the other, which is good to be better. <laughs> yeah. So you come up in authority that way too. Yeah. So definitely. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Well, would you be willing to say a prayer over our listening audience? Mm -hmm. um, however the Lord leads you. Yeah. And so that's right. the camera right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So Jesus, I just thank you for um, all the people that get to watch this segment. I just ask that you would, your presence would come and be on them, Lord. I thank you for your abundant grace mm -hmm. and that you love the entire world, Lord. I thank you that you understand all of us, even when we misunderstand ourselves mm. and each other. And thank you that you are the perfect communicator of love, God, and I thank you for all the ways that you have provided for us to be able to feel that love, and I just ask for this audience, God, that you would um, just give them a lot of courage and bravery to seek to understand mm. the people in their world that maybe they don't understand, um, to ask really great questions, and to be brave to put bring walls down that maybe have still been on there for a while. Mm. So God, I just thank you so much for every single person listening and watching, and I just bless them all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you for tuning in to God Encounters today. We're going to do a part two with Carissa. Um, she's very knowledgeable, as I mentioned, just a little snippet about, but she... Um, you're going to be impressed, and you're going to learn some things. I know you will, and I'm just really excited about this second segment. So stay tuned for part two with Carissa Gobble. Thank you for tuning in today.